One of our readers wrote in, and, and it's a similar question we hear it all the time, it's really common, that people are very excited to travel, but also very nervous, and that's, that's normal, fine. Travel brings so many uncomfortable and new experiences, totally out of your comfort zone. But remember, growth really starts to take place just beyond the limits of your comfort zone. So it's important to get out there. And yeah, you're gonna be nervous, and that's great. It's fun, you get those butterflies, and you're like, where are we going? I remember on our way to India, we were just like, oh, you know what, what to, what's it gonna be like? So some of the main questions were, what about language barriers? Uh, what about luggage? What about uh, packing. packing? What about accommodation? Lodging, lodging. You know, all those different things. So we'll hit a couple of those. Language, you know, I, I love languages and I wanna speak multiple languages. When I'm going somewhere, I try to learn as much as I can. Before India, I grabbed a whole bunch of things on Tamil and started picking up Tamil words. And I studied while I was there. And Spanish, I, I study, I studied and still continue to study a ton. We both do. So we, we speak Spanish fluently. We're going to be going to Brazil on this trip. We're going to learn Portuguese. I've met so many French-speaking people. So I started studying some French. Uh, we just love language. Try to do the best you can. but I think it's a good idea to try and pick up the language as much as you can. Um, it is. I think it's definitely a lot more interesting and easy maybe to travel say in like Latin America for us because we do have the language whereas in India it was more of a challenge um, but they spoke English yeah, and they there's so much English, English around but the world you, you don't have the same connection with like the local people if you don't speak their language I think so that is a challenge that if you're going to be spending a time a some time in some place, I would say, you know, pick up the language. Learn as much as you can. Take classes. When you get there, get some tutoring, take some classes. There's so many free things on YouTube and online, uh, free audio programs. You can just throw your iPod in and just have words, repetition of words in the language. And, and there's so many ways to learn it. So learn some languages because you can connect. Even here in Guatemala where they speak Spanish, th where we're living, they speak Cachiquel. And I feel limited. I can't talk to the, the native villagers because they're all in the Cachiquel. And I really am feeling desirous to start studying and learn it. So languages go and go for it. You'll you'll learn some languages. You'll be able to. I think in general you'll be able to get by. In English. In right. English, yeah. in a lot of places, but learn language. Learn language. Uh, lodging. <clears throat> the question was, do we schedule lodging ahead of time? And we no. We, we no we, we don't do I that. I don't think we've ever done that. I don't think so. We like to go spontaneous. You find the best deals in the coolest places. Um, and people say, what did you get there and there's, there's not any place to stay. I don't think that's ever happened. Uh, even in the busiest times like Semana Santa or other places, uh, you can usually find something. Uh, we like to go a little more spontaneous. A lot of people have to plan and know where they're staying. That's fine. Um, you can get online. Yeah, you know that online it's going to be more expensive yeah. uh, as a general rule. And especially, you know, your first couple of nights you could plan something so when you actually get there you yeah, have to somewhere to go. We did have that for India because it had been arranged to the organization we were working with. They had arranged our place for the first that, time. That's a pretty good deal. If you're rolling somewhere, get something for the first couple of nights and get there and go find another place. That's a, that's a great way to roll. Uh, and then you just find it to your liking, whether it's cheaper or more expensive, whether it's on the water or up in the mountains. You, you can just find your place. And there's so, there's so many ways to look around and find lodging. Um, the next one was packing. Do you take luggage? Uh, do you do a backpack? You know, the logistics of all that. We've done both. We love books. Holy cow, we love books. I literally have packed hundreds of books around the country. I mean, in totes. Around, <laughs> around the world. I mean, <laughs> massive, heavy, heavy totes. I mean, just, <laughs> we yeah, just took when, them all over originally, the place. Originally, you know, we, we traveled with a lot of luggage. We had huge totes filled with books, big suitcases with all kinds of clothes and everything. But now, I mean, we're really more towards the really simplify just take the minimums because you'll be able to get most of the things you need you can buy clothes you can buy toiletries you can buy whatever you whatever need. you need if it's it. going to be cold you'll be able to get you know a jacket they'll have what you need there and so in the cities they'll take, have what you want they, they yeah. you, in the big cities around the world you can find anything you want so take the minimum and take things that you're not going to find, you know, maybe a book or two in English, you know, because they're not going to have that much, that stuff as much. 
We've gone with electronic books now, where we can take hundreds yeah. of books and it doesn't take increase your our Kindle. weight. That's what I so say. we do Kindles or some other form of, of reading, and that's really helped the burden on my back. <laughs> so um, yeah, Packing, backpacks are, are great. I think backpacks are the way yeah, to go. Yeah, backpacks are a good way to go, especially well, even, I mean, with kids as well, but especially great. if you're traveling as a couple or alone. Backpacks yeah. are definitely backpacks great. are way to go. Get a nice, nice, uh, get a good backpack. You can wear a lot, it's comfortable, and be, become a minimalist. That's that's going to be your the best thing. It gives you so much freedom and mobility. Yeah, our friend Jennifer Miller with Adventure Project, she always says they have a one bag rule. Like a one one bag for the entire family, and then every, I think everyone then has their own little backpack that they carry with their stuff. But her kids, they carry their own things in their backpack, and that's it. And then they have a, you know, maybe like a community bag for the family. And, you know... It totally works, and it, works. It, it saves you lots of hassle when you're transporting between planes or onto a bus or you know whatever. It just saves a lot of hassle. And it's good practice for detaching yourself from things. We, we come from a society where you have to have lots of things and you need all these things. You need a gadget for you, everything. Yeah, you got to have your every little thing so you can do every little thing. You know, instead of all those little tools in the kitchen, take a fork and. You know, just just practice minimalism, and, and you'll realize that hey, you know, I, I don't need all that stuff. I can take a small backpack and be totally good to go, and it's it's a great experience and really fun. In fact, do it as a challenge. Go somewhere and just take as little as absolutely possible, and see how it goes. It's just it's a fun way to, to travel. Uh, other fears or concerns. Well, just about, you know, going and knowing what's going to happen or just going and following your heart. And we, we kind of talked about this in an earlier question, but I think you can't plan everything is our, is, you know, our model, kind of. And, and don't even try. You can't, yeah, you can't even try to plan everything. You have to kind of just go with the flow and follow your heart. And, and a lot of times, I mean, we just feel that when you actually get to a place, when you actually get to a country, you really get more of a feel of it whether it's the city you go to or the place you're staying, you get a feel of what it's like. There's only so much that you can learn on the internet or from talking to other people. But until you actually go and experience it yourself, you're not going to know what you really want and how it's going to fit with what you're looking for and all that type of stuff. So just, you know, I say go, get there, and then kind of figure you know, figure it out. And that's how we roll. We, we'll find something online. Hey, I think I want to experience that. We'll do a little more research. That's great. Then when we get there, as soon as we get on the ground, we start talking to the locals. And that's where we do a lot of our planning. And it comes spontaneous. And they, oh, check this out and go see this and do this. And, oh, let's come over here. And, and then we have these incredible experiences. So there's a little bit of planning, a lot of following your heart and kind of going with the flow and, and going for what feels right and, and is fun. And embrace the adventure because it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Go out and have a great time.